predominantly know Ben Collins as the Stig from Top Gear, and now he's on YouTube, both on our channel and his own. But the man has an entire business, an entire career that is his real day job. He's taken part in countless film stunts, and today we're gonna have a go at one of our own. We are gonna film our own little piece of Hollywood, but with a difference. We're gonna film it purely using one of these bad boys. Ben has worked on some truly enormous movies that you will definitely have seen. Fast and Furious, Star Wars, James Bond, and the Enzo Ferrari film coming out in December, to name but a few. This guy is the man, and today is gonna to be a cool one. Essentially, a Stig take your son to work day. The sequence will revolve around Ben Collins, Nick, the CEO of GoPro, and a very valuable suitcase. With Ben directing, you'll also see our talented camera team setting up all of the shots using the GoPro Hero 12 Black and talking through where these shots will fit into the sequence. Ben, you're the director today. You are Michael Mann. So what are we doing today? What's the sitch? Well, I mean, normally for a car chase, we go somewhere like a city where you can get really gnarly. You've got lots of places you can hide and put cars in secret places and kind of have them fly out the screen. But we're at a racetrack, so there's a few compromises here. But mm. ultimately, it's down to the storyline, and obviously, I've got something of extremely high value in this case. Okay. I'm driving around in a flash car. Someone's bound to want what I have. Okay, so we've chosen a track because it's nice and safe and contained versus a yeah. city centre. We've got our two cars. So we've got the 911 Turbo S here. We've also got our long-term Ram TRX. What does that bring to the table in terms of well, they're very different cars on track. Yeah. You know, a lap time they're not going to be even slightly close. But so you, Hollywood plays with that, right? Exactly. You've got to suspend your disbelief, haven't you? It's kind of like Bond being chased by Alfa Romeo's Quantum of Solace. Like, surely, yes. he might, you know, in the real world, he probably would have pulled away. So this thing is, is a lot faster. But the truck, you know, it, it can off-road. So there's going to be places where we can, we can use that to its advantage and play them off against each other. And we're going to be filming the whole thing on the new GoPro Hero 12 yeah. Black. What does that bring to the whole sequence? How will that change anything that you would normally do in Hollywood? The GoPros are awesome because they're really high energy. You can fit them in places where you can't get um, yeah. conventional cameras. So you can really see the action very close up and you can put them much closer in harm's way because they're durable. And, you know, we've got lots of them. So we can put them around different positions on the car to capture every angle. And I think that that's what really keeps the energy because, you know, when you, when you watch it, if you're fixated on one point of view, it kind of gets a bit stale. Um, and I think from the Jason Bourne movies, they were the first to crack that, you know, con you know the, being able to jump cut, yeah. keep the energy there and the action on screen. That and mini car chase, that it, always sticks in my mind. Exactly. Okay, well I know the guys are really looking forward to cracking on with these. Let's see the first scene. Yeah, let's bring it on. Okay, three, two, one, go. Action. Nick, you're our on-screen baddie today, and we've given you our Ram TRX. You've got a truck back home, but what does it compare to this thing? Uh, I've got a lifted Raptor okay. uh, on 40s. It's, That's the enemy for this it's, thing. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, but this, this obviously has a lot more power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're making our own little slice of Hollywood today, but GoPro, you know, people might not associate it with a big screen, but it has definitely been used. What examples are there of GoPro being used in like big time movies? Yeah, since our original HD Hero back in 2009, we've seen GoPros used in a lot of film and television production, and you guys use it a lot, obviously. Oh, absolutely. Uh, some of the biggest movies that GoPro's been used in that we're aware of, The Martian, uh, oh, was sick. cool. Yeah, it was actually like played a kind of a character role yeah, yeah. in that movie, Fast and Furious 7, Red Tails. Uh, and, and it's it's a fun part of the job, spying what shots you know were shot on a GoPro when you when you see it, it's pretty cool. I mean, if Ridley Scott's using them, you're definitely doing something right. Yeah, I was surprised he didn't try to hide it. I mean, yeah. you know, it was supposed to be in the future and there was Hero, I think it was a Hero 3 or a Hero 4. Cool. Uh, it was really cool. Like if you watch the movie, it's like a 
built into their spacesuit. It's pretty awesome. And you're absolutely right in saying we use GoPros multiple on every, pretty much every single video we do on the Drive Tribe channel. But I think we kind of take for granted some of the shots we get, especially how stable they are now. What journey has GoPro been with, specifically with car filming? Because I know you've done a lot of that yourself. Yeah, I mean, I, I started GoPro as a, as a camera for surfers um, company. And, but then I got into motor racing mm -hmm. and the cameras that we had you know, been building to mount on a surfboard or mount on a mountain bike or what have you. Uh, we started destroying them on racing cars because of the vibration. Sure. Uh, and so we had to go and re-engineer uh, the GoPro from the ground up to survive high vib vibration. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I can honestly say that racing made your GoPros that much better. Cool. Well, yeah, I'm super interested to see what Ben and yourself can conjure up today, but good luck being the baddie. Uh, you've definitely got the right colour car for it. I think it's going to look super mean. Yeah, man. It's a lot of fun. This is the part where the Porsche drives off and the TRX is hiding around a corner next to a building, and this is where the chase begins. So Porsche will be driving past, and then we're going to rig up some cameras from the Porsche's point of view, looking at the car coming behind him. And then we've got some external cameras that are going to capture the moment that the Porsche passes across the frame. We are all tucked around here because of the camera angles. The suitcase is now down there. Hollywood. If we roll up here at 25 together, and then I'll try and close the distance to what feels about right before I touch the car, and then I'll blast away. But I'll stay consistent? Yes. Okay. Ignore me in a way. Just be like, oh, he's slowing down. Why? That's his problem. Copy. Exactly. CEO Nick is out doing his first little stunt shot. I do wonder, can a Hero 12 Black take a full-on hit from a Ram TRX? That is a big truck. Ben's just over there going full Michael Mann, surveying everything, directing it. He's in his element. Lovely job. I don't, I don't need the stick. <laughs> what they're doing is great, because we're getting lots of different coverage from different angles. And so we've got that nice shot of him running over the top of the GoPro, professionally done so he didn't crush the camera. And then towing it in with the tracking vehicle, which in this case is a van, which is a little bit unusual. But it's really versatile. So we've got a couple of mounts in the back, stabilized head, GoPros mounted in different directions. So you're getting not just the footage of what the truck's doing, but also capturing the footage of the footage, which is quite cool. And like, like every great director, Ben's got the stick of truth. Like Christopher Nolan probably has a right good stick that he just, you know, Christian Bale, come on, get over there, just son. Need yeah. it. Just uses his words, Mike. Michael Mann. Also no stick. Ridley Scott. Just does it with his eyes. Really, Scott. I think again, he just looks across and people, things just happen for him. So, just setting the cameras up on the track and we're gonna shoot an in and an out shot. So the cars are gonna be chasing each other and they're gonna come straight over the top of the GoPros. Um, the Ram has got probably a lot more clearance than the Porsche, so that should get over no problem. The Porsche should still be fine because the cameras are pretty small. So, set these up going. You should be good. So, they've got the camera mounted on the rear. So everything we do behind, you can see when we shoot past it, that's, that's out of shot. So we'll, we'll, I was thinking, because you're the bad guy in this, obviously. So we're going to be kind of interfering with each other on the track. You can do a few intimidation moves like coming in close and we can do a bit of jostling, but playing to this all the time. But um, if we come, if we cook it up towards the camera at speed, then we can just split off onto a different sides and we can shoot past it. You, you're, you've raced cars before, so you know what that's all about. Oh yeah. We'll try and get it a little bit close, but no rubbing. Rubbing is bad. Do my best. All right. All I think right. I've got an advantage in the truck. I think you do, although you can't see much. No. I love how Yuki is like, a, and you, as you guys speak of the car, it's like full on the character. <laughs> yeah. How can you sell Yuki? 
It's become such a part of the team. It's become it a is. part of Mike, hasn't it? It is an extension of Mike. <laughs> it suits him, doesn't it? It really does. <laughs> it does. It's like a, it's a good brand match. Do you need some it? help pushing it? <laughs> is that all? <laughs> it's the least effort. I think you sure you want to sell Yuki? Like, you guys seem like a good pairing. You'll be in shot there. I'll, yeah. Let's push it a bit further. Feels like a, a movie to be made about whoever, like, Passionately owns Yuki. It would be like a like a good character story. Yeah. And all his friends are giving him shit, and he just can't understand why people don't understand how <laughs> rad his car is. <laughs> you don't get it. Don't get it. He is cool. Do you want them? Take them back. <laughs> Put it in my uh, ch checked luggage. So we're now fitting these bolts on, and we've got a, one of the GoPro 12s faced directly at the wheel. Um, we've just done uh, tracking with the cars and uh, we've seen the TRX go from the tarmac onto the grass. So it'd be really nice to, to see that transition from tarmac onto the grass. Hence why we've got the bolt on faced at the wheel and we can get a really good angle of that. Normally we use these small amounts, um, but uh, it'd be really nice to get the GoPro at a proper angle, uh, which is why we've got these more heavy, heavy duty mounts that sort of clip on to these really nice cages um, and uh, yeah that's the shot we've set up and hopefully it'll uh, it'll come out okay so far so good and the whole idea with these car chases is to make them look really dangerous and sketchy full of energy um, but to do them completely safely so we're planning everything really carefully um, and the great thing with these little cameras the gopros we can put them in places where you can get it really really close to a turning wheel or a car flying past it at high speed um, but without actually risking the cars. So it's pretty cool. And being with a really experienced team, like Drive Tribe makes everything pretty easy. And Nick's a pretty handy driver as well. So that's proven to be awesome. So yeah, let's keep it up. Ben, I want to do some name dropping. So, I mean, people may know you for um, Bond specifically and Fast and Furious, but come on, tell us some other big Hollywood flicks that you've been involved in. Uh, I've worked some great movies. I doubled Vin Diesel in Fast and Furious 6. Sick. That was epic. Um, doubled Han Solo. Um, that was Ron Howard in the end, um, directed that. Um, but so we had a few directors on that, on that film, but Ron put it all together. But that was driving the, the speeder, I mean, come on. Oh, okay. Jumping into a TIE fighter factory. So, so that then got CGI'd. So that was a car that got CGI'd. The wheels got CGI'd out, but it was a real machine. It had a V8, um, space frame chassis, nice. rally suspension, the whole thing. That was epic. Mm -hmm. The Bond movies, obviously, and then what else? Um, worked in Transformers, that was Michael Bay. Nice. Um, the Bayhem which was hilarious, um, so I really enjoyed that, that was fun. And then Michael Mann, the new, this new Ferrari movie that's coming out at Christmas, which is yes. going to be incredible. So okay, cool. That was super cool, so that's set in the 50s. So they re-engineered all these, actually a lot of them were based on Caterhams, they had some original period cars, all that kind of stuff. So that was really, really hectic, because he, he likes to, you know, to really bring that full on, close proximity, all that stuff to the screen. So I mean, I'm a huge fan of his films, he, Last of the Mohicans. Great stuff. And some of these cars, some of these film cars, are they absolute sheds or do they actually drive quite well? Are they kind of rushed engineering wise or yeah. do they have to be really tight? Some of them are sheds. Um, ideally, you, you, you hope that you can give enough you know, information to the guys that you can get time to prepare and all that mm. sort of stuff. But, but ultimately, yeah, there are times when you have to just jump in a shed and get the most out of it, but that's also quite fun. Um, it's why I like Yuki so much. So sure. it's, it's, like, it's like coming home. You didn't almost break him yesterday. I'm I sorry. was quite upset. I think yesterday. it was okay, but you were like, oh, it revs to 12,000, so I thought that was, I thought nine would be fine. Sure. Um, anyway, no, it's great. I, I love it. I mean, the variety of cars and, and crews and directors, and it's the, the, that creative process and so many different ways of doing it. Um, and also, yeah, another, one of my absolute favorites, um, I worked with uh, on Chris Nolan's movie, Dark Knight Rises, driving oh, nice. one of the tumblers. Um, so a friend of mine, George, George Cottle had done that series since the beginning, um, so he you know, did all the development of that, that truck, or what do you want to call it, the Batmobile, uh -huh. um, and then in the final film we had three. Mine had rockets, so I was, I was pretty chuffed with that. Sick. Right, we're on location for what I see as the centrepiece of our little piece today. Yep. Um, easy peasy? I hope so. I mean, you've got to pay attention with all this stuff. We've got some nice timings. Um, you know, it's Nick's first day as a stunt driver, he's holding up brilliantly, so as long as I'm on my mark and Everybody's gonna get what they're expecting, so it should be fine. Okay, good luck. Thank you. You're gonna spin by, and then I'll go right behind you. Yeah.
5K. This looks to be the most dynamic sequence of the entire film so far, probably of the whole thing. What we've done is we've filmed the Porsche being tagged from behind by the Ram. It was done simply through a GoPro going into it, but you know, in the film, it'll look like the Ram has pit maneuvered the 911. Ben is then going to flick the car enough that it completely spins out as if he has been completely spanned by the Ram. Here we go, Porsche PR, maybe look away now. Close your laptop. <laughs> that man is a pro. And how well did Nick do? The timing of that looked spot on. And that now looks like there's been a pit maneuver. Look at that. So this camera's looking straight at my head and I could give it the old, yeah. like he's coming, I'm watching him go around, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Nice. like that. Yeah, nice. But you, gotta, so, you don't want to block with that arm. No, good call. But I'm um, actually, but if you're happy to start over there, then I can, I can like eyeball you. Yeah. Like w nervously. Is this guy's problem? Dude. You forgot your wallet. <laughs> You're supposed to hang on to it. <laughs> ben, that's the final shots of the day done. Were you happy with how everything went? I was happy. We didn't break anything. What yeah. did it look like to you? It looked great. Nick was fantastic. He genuinely looked like he was a professional. Hasn't raced for, I think he said, eight years? Yeah. So he lit it up on the track and he was, a, he was smoking it in that truck. Absolutely. Well, yeah. without further ado, introduce your film. I liked it. He put on the scare really well. So guys, I hope you enjoy the film, Operation Lost Property. Roll the video. Thanks. <laughs>